the Lusitania lays on the bottom in an area with a tremendous flow of tidal water. And what that means is we had to dive the wreck either at slack high tide or slack low tide, depending upon the day. Now, at high tide, the wreck was roughly 300 feet deep. And you can see here on my gauges that uh, they're registering 306 feet. At low tide, it was only about 290 feet. So we had about 15 feet of differential. Now, we're up on the bow on this particular dive. And what you're going to see is the very prow, the very tip of the bow of Lusitania. Now, it lifts off to the starboard side at about a 30-degree angle. Also up on the bow, we found the raised letters spelling Lusitania. There's the L, the U, the S, the I, the T, the A, the N, the I, and the final A, spelling Lusitania. Now that's on the port side, the high side of the wreck. Also on that high side of the wreck, we've got one of the remaining sets of boat davits. And of course, the, the lifeboats were not deployed from these davits. But you can see how the boat davits have also collected a lot of fishing nets. There was a, a, a lot of uh, fishing nets on the wreck. In the area of the bridge where we are now, there's also a lot of beautiful artifacts laying around on the bottom. Uh, here, one of the divers is actually between two of the different uh, uh, telegraphs from the bridge. Now, the telegraphs were used by the bridge to telegraph their commands down to the engine room, whether they wanted to go ahead or astern. And these were, uh, there were several of them up on the bridge, but at the same time, in the engine room, they needed a way to communicate what was actually going on at the time. And they did that with an enunciator. That's what's in the center of your screen right here. The enunciator told the bridge what the status was in the engine room. The enunciator that we found actually said that the ship was going full speed ahead, uh, uh, presumably at the time that it sank. And that of course, was one of the problems with Lusitania and contributed towards the, the very rapid sinking of the ship and, of course, the significant loss of life. Now, there were a lot of interesting uh, uh, um, artifacts and features and architecture to Lusitania. This is, this is one of the things that is very Lusitania. This, you can see this, this bell with the very distinctive triangular pieces of, of glass in it was underneath the observation point on the bridge wings. And uh, of course, we use very distinctive features like that to help us navigate around uh, on the wreck site. And there's John Yerga, my dive buddy, uh, looking at one of the many portholes on Lusitania. Here's one of the capstans from the bow. And uh, sometimes capstans will have covers on them that are very ornate and might have the ship's uh, name on it or, or the name of the shipping line. In, in this case, it seemed unusually plain. Now, uh, we had a very short window to conduct our, our dives. We were doing dives uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, uh, 30 minutes in length. Um, some divers were doing a little bit shorter than that. But we could also sense when we were on the wreck, you, you could start to feel the tide pick up and you knew it was time to get out of there. We'd head up to start our decompression. And of course, we would use a drift decompression because of the dynamic conditions. But that's another video.